I'm the new actress on Emmerdale. What would you have your old role? I'm the old road and I'm from Newcastle. So I'm Kemi's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so have you got any comments on your uh, Emmerdale old road? There's plenty of room in a shag. <laughs> what, sheep? Like sheep, whatever. There's not a lot around here apart from sheep. The Audi All Road first appeared in 1999 and was an adaptation of Audi's C5 A6 platform. The car came with a range of engines from the 2.5 litre TDI with 177 horsepower, the 2.7 litre bi-turbo engine car that we see here and the range topping 4.2 litre V8. This is one of the most practical estate cars of the time. The question is what are we going to do with it now we bought it? Well, our man in knitwear has said we're going to take this off-roading. God help us. Guess we'd better do some work on the world's most unreliable car. For those of you who are familiar with the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, you will understand the kind of painful sadomasochism that owning an Audi all-road comes with. If you enjoy being spanked furiously with studded paddles, then buying a 2.7-litre bi-turbo Audi all-road may actually be just up your street. Everything on this car is an absolute nightmare from start to finish. Even getting the cigarette lighter out is almost an engine out job. So do not buy this car if you're into anything a little bit too vanilla. What an absolute pain in the backside. These Torx bolts are just absolutely almost welded. Somebody's snapped a couple of Torx 45s off in there before, so seemingly not the first time it's been a pain in the ass. We're up here in the Yorkshire Dales and it's blowing a gale and of course being a Yorkshireman with an Audi All Road we're wearing a sports vest which is the only appropriate attire when it gets cold in Yorkshire but of course we can finish this one off with a little bit of practicality so self-respecting Yorkshireman goes anywhere without his flat cap, especially when he's in a four-wheel drive. With its permanent four-wheel drive system and these aggressive matte grey flared arches, you have to wonder if the All Roads designer was something of a part-time weekend serial killer. This car's certainly big enough to dispose of a corpse and its go-anywhere attitude will probably get you into remote locations where you might want to get rid of any evidence. Despite ticking all of the boxes for any would-be serial killer, the discreet styling would make this blend in in any suburban environment too. This all road in level 4 will jack up and give you 8 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty much as good as an off-roader. Now don't get me wrong, although the Quattro system in this is incredibly capable, it's certainly not a true off-roader. However, for green lanes like this, it's pretty much ideal and certainly more than capable of getting you around in places where a normal estate car certainly wouldn't. Stop the car, turning it on. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop this into level four. It goes up faster and it stays up longer than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> The Audi's next challenge was to chase some sheep, and if there's one thing Yorkshire sheep are frightened of, it's a Yorkshireman behind them. Having spotted the cavernous luggage space offered by this C5 All Road, these sheep made a break for it, knowing full well they were at risk of the whole family being kidnapped. Sheep, where are you? With this particular all-road, you've got something for everyone. You've got an incredibly practical estate car that you could fit probably nine sheep into. And then on top of that, you've got a very capable sports car, at least in a straight line. And at least if you go for the 2.7 litre bi-turbo or you go for the 4.2 litre V8 engine options, both of which, uh, certainly with a little tune on the 2.7, will see you good for around 310 horsepower. You've also got quite a capable off-roader. Yes, it's not really a true off-roader, but Audi's Quattro system does do a very good job. On top of that, with the air suspension, you've got eight inches of ground clearance 
on the standard road tyre without really doing any modifications to it. And that's enough for us not to have bottomed out today whilst we're driving around on these green lanes. You can just grab, well, you could just grab a bird that's just flown away. You could grab a bird and you could grab the family, load the car up with some camping gear and go into the wilderness of North Yorkshire or West Yorkshire and actually you'd be perfectly fine. I've arrived here in Slaley Forest, which are all of these trees around me. And we're gonna go all the way up this road here and have a little explore around some of these green lanes and see what we can do. Can this Audi all road, this 15 year old car on road tires manage to get us around safely today? That is a debatable question. Who knows, some of these roads are looking pretty rough. But let's give it a go, see what happens. This C5 platform all road is much more capable off road than the newer C6 and C7 platforms. It's dirtier than a Filipino porn star, straddles the ruts better, and is probably a lot more too. And get those crazy flies. In Mother Russia, we have no crazy flies. We have Kalashnikovs. One thing that we do know from today is that this car is even on these crappy Chinese road tyres. This car is actually incredibly capable for an estate car that's, yeah, I mean we're just going through some big puddles and the road is slippy and this thing's just having absolutely no issues whatsoever. As you can see, my big ass is getting bounced around all over the place here. I am twerking more than a Snoop Dogg video right now, but it's quality fun. We're absolutely and utterly in our element in this car. Um, I'm so interested to see what this thing can do with a little bit more underbody protection and a set of big chunky mud tires on it, uh, which is gonna happen. We're gonna put those onto the 16 inch wheels that we've got for this, which we've currently got winter tires of Pirelli Soto Zeros on there. I'm gonna swap those out and put a mud tire on there or an off-road tire um, that also has some winter capability. And then we're gonna come and have some more fun with this vehicle, drive it like it should be. I might stay in the pub. Stay in the pub. AKA the studio. So, have you got any advice for anybody who wants to do any off roading? Well, I normally clean my bathroom in a bikini, don't I? Yeah. And I was thinking maybe I should have brought my bikini for off roading because it'd be more practical. But I just didn't think. To do. What are you going to wear footwear wise with your bikini? Flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that idiot stood on the edge. If he falls in, he'll cause a tsunami. <laughs> right, up in front of us, we have what can only be described as some bomb craters. These things look deep as hell. I've been out of the car, I've thrown some sticks and some rocks into the middle of these and they look like it's gonna come over the bonnet of this. In a four-wheel drive like a Land Rover, Discovery, or a Defender, or in a Jeep, I would have absolutely no qualms at getting through these with a snorkel on. In a family estate car, with my family in. Hmm, begs the question, will it make it through? Should we actually really do this? In the interests of testing fully, this mighty Audi all road. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna really just plunge straight in and see if we can get through this lake in front of us. On it like a car bonnet. On it like a car bonnet. That's exactly what we're gonna do. We'll see you on the other side. Bye for now.
Whilst Nicola was contemplating going for a swim, I took the opportunity to dive straight in. You'll be alright, Dan. Back floats. Cheeky bugger. Despite having sensibly packed a bubble, there was no need at all for the owl to make use of it. Fortunately, Nicola was keen to have a go through some of these deeper holes herself. Having successfully made it across, we decided to go again. Today reminds me of a joke. Oh god, go on. What do you get if you cross the Atlantic with the Titanic? Nick, I've got no idea. <laughs> About halfway. <laughs> Ignore the inappropriate jokes. Having made it through roads that would frighten Bear Grylls, we switched up to wearing some knitwear, put on some Dolly Parton, and enjoyed a leisurely ride through the forest. Nothing that we had thrown at this Audi had defeated it. It had proved itself to be more resilient than Sylvester Stallone in Cliffhanger. Quite how a 15 year old family estate car had managed to get over roads that would challenge an SAS Land Rover, I'm really not quite sure. With civilization fast approaching, we were left to contemplate how this car had done something that we never thought it could. This Audi All Road is one of the few things in the local area that's filthier than Nicola's home video collection. But let me tell you what, today this car has got us around some pretty gnarly off-road tracks up in the wilds of Northumberland. And without a shadow of a doubt, you can't ask anything more of your family daily driver estate car. It's absolutely amazing. With values on the all-road at an all-time low, diesel variants available from as little as £700, this car represents amazing value for money for it to go anywhere, do anything attitude. Look forward to seeing this vehicle again in future episodes, and don't forget to subscribe and come back for more content. See you all soon. It was while sitting in this very park that I came up with a new way to gauge how deep some of these bomb craters are. Aria! Do you like walking in puddles? Yeah. There we go. Problem solved. Come on, Aria. There's really no need to leave home. Things are not going to be any better at Clarkson's.